Hey everyone, in today's video we are going to talk all about teaching measurement in first and second grade. I always find that teaching measurement is a fun skill to teach because it breaks up the other topics of addition, subtraction, and place value that I feel like we work on all year long. So I love kind of breaking that up and letting students practice something new. So in this video, I have some ideas, activities, and I even have a freebie for you to teach measurement. If you've seen my videos before, then welcome back. And if you are new here, my name is Susan Jones. I'm a former first grade and K through two literacy teacher who now spends a lot of time here on YouTube sharing tips, ideas, and strategies for K through two teachers just like you. My goal on this channel is to always provide informative and actionable videos with ideas and activities that you can take and use in your classroom right away. If that sounds good to you and you're ready to hear these measurement tips, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's get started. First and foremost, when you are teaching measurement in first and second grade, there are four main things that I try to keep in mind that you really want your students to master while they are measuring things. The first step when teaching students how to measure is going to be to make sure they choose the correct tool. Now in first grade, we really focus on non-standard measurements. So we might be using cubes, we might be using pencils, crayons, whatever we have at our disposal. In second grade, you will move to more standard measurement. So students will need to think about the correct tool to use. You can do that in first grade as well. For example, if I am teaching students to measure something like a doorway or this bookshelf, I would ask them, do you think we should measure this using things like these cubes or should we measure this using something like a book? Maybe we can use the length of a book. And students could just discuss why they think either one. They might say, oh, we can use cubes, it'll be easy to stack. But then they might think, well, cubes are pretty small and could we even make it that tall? Would it fall over? Maybe if we use something like a book or something longer, we could get a more accurate measurement or we could get that measurement quicker. Really, you just want students thinking about which tools they can use and which tools they probably should use. Another good example to do this is to find something small to measure. So maybe we wanted to measure this book right here. Maybe we wanted to measure the length of this book. Now again, you could ask students, okay, could I measure it using cubes or should I measure it using something, you know, longer than this? Maybe I'll take off my shoe and say, could I measure this using shoes? You'll want students to recognize that we can get a more accurate measurement if we're using cubes than if we are using a whole shoe because it'll probably take up most of the book and then we don't really know how much more there is. When students move to second grade, they will of course have many standard tools to measure things. They will use inches on a ruler. They will use centimeters. They might use a scale. So they will really have to think about a specific tool that they need to use or the best tool option to get the most specific measurement. But either way, number one is choose your tool. Number two is going to be to line up items properly. And all this means is students are going to need to use their tool and match it up to the end of whatever they're measuring. So if they are measuring this marker here, they can't just start their measurement here. They need to actually push it all the way to the side. Oh look, this is like perfectly measured. <laughs> I didn't even do that on purpose. They will need to make sure that it is lined up to the side, especially in first grade. Many of your second graders probably will already know this, but it is important to reiterate. But your first graders, you need to teach them to line it up before they start measuring. And I usually teach them to line it up on the zero side or the smallest side so they can count up. The third thing we want students to know about measuring is to not overlap or leave spaces in their measuring tool. Now this is important in two different ways. If you are teaching non-standard measurement using something like cubes to as your measuring tool, you will want students to make sure that if they're measuring that book or whatever they're measuring the pencil, that they are not leaving spaces in between. They won't get an accurate measurement. They need to actually stack up the cubes or if they're using paper clips, they need to go end to end without overlapping to make sure they're getting an accurate measurement. Now also, not just with your tool, because let's think we're talking standard measurement and we're using a ruler, there won't be any spaces there or gaps. So let's pretend we're measuring these four crayons, we will have our ruler down at the bottom here. Students will need to learn that the crayons cannot overlap one another and they cannot have gaps in between. They have to go end to end. That way we can get an accurate measurement. And lastly, the fourth thing we want students to do is to make sure they measure end to end. 
it's kind of like a process students are working through. They will have the item they're going to measure. So first they need to go ahead and pick the tool. Secondly, they will need to line that tool up properly. Third, they will need to make sure that the items or the measuring tool are not overlapped and that they don't have any gaps. And then they can go ahead and measure how long or how tall or how wide something is from one end all the way to the other. So once you have those four main things in mind, you can make an anchor chart for it and have students know that top of mind, these are the steps they're going to walk through when we are measuring something. Now we can actually have students practice their measurements. Now in the past, I've actually shared two activity videos. This one right here is car and ramp races. It is a fun one where students will actually build a ramp and they just use like little Hot Wheels cars and they'll see how far it goes, mark it with a post-it and then measure the distance. So it's like a little fun STEM activity to go along with measurement. And then I've also done this video right here where I share stringy shapes. And with this, students are actually looking at a fun shape and they are making it with their string and then they straighten it out to measure how long each string and each shape actually were. And then they can compare them. Both of those are great with both standard and non-standard measurement. So I will link those videos. They're very quick down in the description below in case you want to check them out after this video. But now let's see some other fun measurements activities. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share two activities where students are going to compare measurements and two fun activities for students to actually practice measuring with standard or non-standard measurements. Let's start with comparing items. I have this fun game right here. This is called Roll and Compare, and it is in my print and play measurement pack. And this is a fun partner game that you could play. Students could also play individually if they wanted, but you would simply get a little basket and gather all these regular classroom materials and put them in there. We have a binder, we have some crayons, some binder clips, scissors, paint, a paintbrush, glue, all these different little examples. And in your basket, you would only need one of each item. All students would have to do here is roll and compare, hence the name of the game. So if students go ahead and roll a three, they will start at the bottom and they will need to compare the lengths of the notebook and the scissors. Now it is important to remind your students that they're not looking at it on the worksheet. They are comparing these in real life. That's why you want the basket there. So you will grab your notebook and your pair of scissors. Students will have to line them up properly. So whether they're lining them going horizontally or vertically, but they'll need to line up their ends and then see which one is longer. They will go ahead and circle which one is longer in real life and then they can have their partner go. Their partner will go ahead and roll a dice. Let's say they get a six and they have a ruler and a crayon. Again, they will line them up and compare the lengths. Now I like this center because of course it is tactile, it's hands-on. It's good to see if students are able to line up the items properly to actually go ahead and measure and they get used to comparing the different lengths of items. You can also definitely extend this by having students measure them. So if you wanted to use some non-standard cubes, you could have them measure how long the scissors are, and then measure how long the notebook is and compare them together if you wanted to, or you could have them use a ruler if you're teaching standard measurement. But generally speaking for this center, I don't have them actually measure the item yet. This is kind of an intro one to get used to comparing and lining things up properly. The next comparing activity I have for you is your freebie today, and it is a measurement scavenger hunt. Now I have three different sheets here. One is longer than a pencil, shorter than a pencil, longer than a ruler, shorter than a ruler, longer than a pair of scissors, and shorter than a pair of scissors. With these sheets, all students will have to do is walk around the classroom with their measuring tool, which would be a pencil, a ruler, or those pair of scissors. And the pair of scissors and the pencil actually are great because each student might have a different option. The pair of scissors, depending on what they have, might be smaller or shorter. Uh, same with the pencil, you know, sometimes kids have pencils like this big. But students will have to walk around and they will need to hold up their measuring item and try to find three items shorter than a pencil and three items longer than a pencil. And they will write or draw them in the boxes. This is another great one because again, it is tactile. Students are actually up walking around the classroom and it's a good one to use towards the beginning of your measurement unit. And of course, to extend this, just like the other activity, you could have students actually measure those items first. So if they're measuring a pencil, maybe you want them to measure it with cubes or a ruler, and then they can actually take this around and measure instead of the physical pencil. 
All right, now for some more activities where students are actually measuring items. The first one I love is actually from a math program called Investigations. I believe it was called Investigations. Um, and it's called Animal Jumps. Now it was mentioned in their curriculum, but it is such an easy one to recreate in your own classroom and it is really fun, kind of like the car ramp racing one that I told you about earlier. So for this, all you'll need is some masking tape and some room in your classroom. Now you can make this up, but you could make it more fun if you actually looked up how far different animals can hop or jump like a frog a rabbit a kangaroo and you can measure those out on your classroom floor with some masking tape and what you'll do for each one is you can label them a b c or you can just print out a picture of a kangaroo and put it next to that masking tape then you'll just give students some sort of recording sheet it can be a blank piece of paper and they will with a partner go around to each of the different animals and measure how far or how long they can jump now, I particularly like this activity too because students will practice measuring things that are probably a lot longer than their tool. So let's pretend they're measuring that kangaroo line, the kangaroo hop. They will go over to it, they will write A or kangaroo, whatever you're marking them by, and they will take their tool, let's pretend it's 10 cubes, and they will line it up at the end of that masking tape. And then once they reach the end here where their cubes don't go on any longer, their partner will have to put their finger down so they can continue that measurement. And then they will do that over and over until they can get an accurate measurement and write it down. I like to do this with about six or seven different animals, have students take their time and measure it. You can also have them measure each of the jumps in two different ways. So you might ask them to measure each jump in cubes and you also might ask them to measure each jump in footprints. So they would have to choose one of the students feet to use as their measuring tool and they would see how many footprints they could make it and then you can compare the two measurements. Another fun measurement activity I have is from my print and play measurement unit. It looks like this and it is called find and measure. Here I have two different sheets, you can see both of them here, and students can again work separately or with a partner, and they will roll two dice and find the sum. So in this sheet over here, if they roll a nine, then they will gather three crayons, stack them together, and measure them. And then if they roll a five, they'll measure a glue stick, or if they roll an 11, they'll have to measure two glue sticks. Again, just using some basic school supplies that you have in your classroom already, and students will have to try to figure out what the measurements are. Now, I like this one too because it comes with this recording sheet, and after students actually measure how long everything is, they need to go ahead and answer some questions comparing and ordering these measurements. And again, that can be done with both standard and non-standard measurement tools. So there you have a bunch of different ideas and activities for teaching measurement in your own classroom. I would love to know if you've done any of these in your own class, and if not, what are some other fun measurement games or activities that you like to do, drop them down in the comments below. Everything mentioned in this unit, I will link in the description. And of course, don't forget to grab your scavenger hunt freebie, which will also be in the description as well. As always, I do hope you enjoyed this video and got some ideas that you can take and use in your classroom right away. If you did enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up so I know. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and click that bell. That way you're notified of every new video. And right now I put out videos on Thursday and Sunday mornings. See you in the next one. Bye.